Today's lecture is going to focus on picking topics and organization. So, no, we're in still sort of the area of invention, but now we're moving on to talk about persuasion. So, topics is what I'll first discuss, and then I'll move on to talk about how to organize them, or basically moving into the canon of arrangement. So before I start talking about that, one thing I want to remind you about is because we've moved on to persuasion, what we learned in the informative speech, we're going to be taking to the persuasive speech. So things like engaging the audience, sources, transitions. I'm not going to be talking about that this time, but that's still something I'm expecting for the next speech. So just because it's not addressed doesn't mean you don't need to apply it. We're building like building blocks. Each time we move on to another speech, what we learned in the earlier speech carries on. So as far as topics, when you're coming up with your persuasive speech topic, and I'm going to ask that you do that today actually, you need to think, what is it that I actually want to convince the audience of? And that factors into three different questions. Question of fact, question of value, and question of policy. So let's first start with question of fact. Question of fact is going to deal with things like historical controversies, questions of current existence, predictions, things like that. Factual things that you can prove exist or don't exist or will happen. I typically find about 5 to 10 percent of students fall into this topic category. The other two questions I'm going to talk about are a bit more popular. The next one is question of value. Question of value is dealing with moral issues, right? Right or wrong, and you're weighing options here. So something is better or worse, moral, immoral, right or wrong, like I just mentioned before. So you're looking at the morality of a particular issue you're going to discuss. This typically is closer to maybe 20 to 30 percent of students, and everyone else falls into the last category which is question of policy. Now unlike question of fact or question of value, question of policy is asking for a specific change. Some sort of action should be taken. So you're going to form it in this way to persuade my audience that X should do Y. So X here would be the institution making the change, Y would be the actual change. I'm going to give you some examples of what topics look like in a sec, so if you still feel like you don't totally understand how these questions work, give me one second and you'll probably understand it. So let's start with question of fact. To persuade my audience that ghosts are real, so things of sort of um, controversy or things that people don't believe in, that's a really good area for question of fact. I actually had a student who did this topic. Predictions was also something that I mentioned. This is a really old prediction that I had. Uh, to persuade my audience that the government is covering up Area 51, so other sort of controversial issues. And to persuade my audience that Oswald acted alone when assassinating President Kennedy. So like I mentioned before, historical controversies. So these are all good examples of typically what you'll see questions the fact topics looking like. Question of value, like I said, is going to be weighing moral options. So to persuade my audience that human cloning is morally justified, to persuade my audience that chemical weapons are immoral, to persuade my audience that it is better to live together before marriage, to persuade my audience that Pepsi is better than Coke. This probably is not the best topic, but it is weighing options. So notice that each of the topics is using things like morally justified, immoral, better, better, or could be using worse. I'm not using a negative for the two better topics. But that's going to be the emphasis of question of value. You're not actually asking for anything to be changed. You're just making a judgment about it. Now, question of policy is where you're actually making a change. So let me break down how this works. This one's a little bit more complicated than the other two. So like I said before, it has to be formed in the X should do Y. So X is going to be the institution making the change. Y is going to be the specific thing you want to change. So keep in mind, there's actually two options for an institution. An institution could be an entity, right, like um, the Florida government, the U.S. government, um, Palm Beach State College, the City of Lake Worth, any entity that can make a change, even say a business, um, or the FDA, whatever it is, but some particular entity that can make a change, or the institution actually could be the audience. The audience could also make a change. So when we're talking about institution, you first have to identify 
who is it that the who's making the change who is it that is actually the institution because that's actually going to change what the topic is so there's two options in question of policy the first is passive agreement Passive agreement is when someone other than the audience makes the change. So I like to kind of sit of them as being passive, right? They're not actually doing something. So here, just to remind you and go back, this is when the entity would be the institution as opposed to the audience. So some examples of topics. Congress should authorize drone strikes on ISIS. This actually just happened. Um, colleges should decrease tuition prices by 5%. And Florida should allow medicinal cannabis. So these are all examples of passive agreement because notice the institution, Congress, college, Florida. The audience isn't doing anything. Now, the other option is the audience can do something, and this is called personal action. So the audience has to make a change, right? They actually have to get up and do something. So, to persuade my audience to participate in intramural athletics, to persuade my audience to volunteer as literacy tutors, to persuade my audience to vote. So notice the audience here is the one making the change. So whoever is making the change, whoever is the institution, is going to dictate whether it's passive agreement or personal action. Now, for topics, I've given you all these different questions, right? Question of value, question of fact, question of policy. What I want you to understand is you can take any topic and put it into each one of these questions. So I have the topic here of dogs. I, I know that's probably not the best topic, but I just didn't want to take anything that a student would pick. So if I start with question of fact, I could turn that into dogs descend from wolves, right? Just factually prove something like that. Question of value. Remember, this is dealing with moral issues, so I could say dogs are better than cats. Question of policy passive. Remember, this is an entity that has to take on the change, someone other than the audience. So I could say Palm Beach State should allow dogs on campus. And then personal, this is the audience having to do something. Everyone should adopt a dog. So as you're thinking of sort of subject areas, once you narrow them down into topics, you have to determine which question is it, right? Am I asking my audience to change their belief? Then that would be question of value. Am I asking them to do something? That would be personal. Am I asking someone else to do something? That would be passive. So it's important that you pinpoint specifically what you want the audience to do or believe or agree with. The other thing too to keep in mind is when you're looking at these topics it's important to be able to identify which one is which. So I'm going to give you some example topics see if you can identify them. It is better to sign a prenuptial agreement before marriage. So this is value. Be careful because some people automatically would identify this as action because I'm talking about a prenuptial agreement but I'm saying it's better. So question of value always would have an emphasis on better, worse, moral, immoral. Palm Beach State should increase funding to clubs. This is passive because Palm Beach State would be doing it. All students should recycle on a daily basis. This is personal. The audience would have to do it. The U.S. should legalize marijuana. This is passive. U.S. government would have to do it. The death penalty is morally wrong. This is value. And everyone should make a Facebook page this would be personal. The audience would have to take it on. So hopefully you guessed all of those correctly. If you didn't, then you may want to go back and review a little bit to make sure you're clear. Now, in addition to thinking about how to actually phrase your topic, you have to make sure it's not a banned topic. So when we move on to persuasion, while I want you to be creative and think about topics that you want to do, I have gotten these topics over and 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 I have to ban them. So here they are. Abortion. Legalization of marijuana. I'm sorry guys that pot isn't legal, but I don't want to hear your speech on it. Lowering the drinking age. I know you can go to war at 18, but the drinking age is 21. Blame Reagan for that. If you want to look it up, by all means, it's an interesting fact on history. Same-sex marriage. Texting while driving. Anything health related, you can check with me on that, but most health topics typically don't work well. They're not worth persuading the audience on because they already agree with it. And blood donation. So these are off limits. You cannot do them. Don't even ask. The other thing too with topics. So in addition to what I talked about 
last time as far as topics being narrow, relevant, all of that stuff still applies and I'm not going to cover it again. I am adding on one other thing. Topics have to be controversial. So it's really important for a persuasive topic that you're talking about something you can actually try and convince your audience of. If it's not controversial, there's no point. So let me give you an example. Adopting a dog. That was an example I had earlier. This isn't controversial, right? Does anyone disagree with this besides the fact that people might say, well, I'm allergic to a dog or right now I can't have a dog? Would anyone disagree with the notion of adoption? Probably not. So then what's the point of doing this speech? So just like I talked about with the informative speech, if your audience already knows about the information, there's no one point in informing them about it. So with persuasive, if your audience is already persuaded on the topic, there's no point in persuading them on it. Bullying, this is another one. Most people wouldn't agree to bullying, at least I hope not, right? You wouldn't say, oh, we should bully. So why are you convincing them on it? So you really have to think of something controversial. I know this kind of throws a wrench in your topic, but start thinking of how you can make a topic controversial. All right, now what we're going to focus on is organization. So once you've picked your topic, and I'll address that a little bit more in homework, how do you actually start organizing it once we move to the outline process? So, there are three types of organization. Unlike the informative speech, these formats of organization are much, much more specific and have specific ways that you have to set up your points. So it's important you pay attention. Statement of reasons is the first one, problem, cause, solution, and Monroe's motivated sequence. I'll talk about each of these. First, statement of reasons. Now, if you have a topic that is question of fact or question of value, automatically you have to do statement of reasons. You don't really have a choice in the matter. That dictates the organizational structure. Now statement of reasons basically is kind of what it says. It's just breaking down your reasons to sort of prove your argument. So let's look at an example of that to see how it functions in an outline. So this particular one is um, talking about September 11th. So this is more of a conspiracy theory topic, which is really common for question of fact. Now, first thing I want to point out, the introduction is not going to change. So if you'll notice here, we have the same steps, right? Your attention getter. So he starts with some pictures. You have your thesis statement, your value step, your ethos, and your preview. So the introduction's not going to change. It's when we get to the body of the speech that it is. Now, statement of reasons, if you get this one, you're actually kind of at an advantage as far as it's not going to radically change what you did in the informative speech. What you have to do are pinpoint the strong arguments. So first he starts off with talking about structural information, and then just like we did before, you need to back that up with evidence. So he uses two different things here. Then he's talking about the impact of the planes, and then the rest of it would be evidence. And then, of course, he's talking about particular um, demolition and what was actually used, and then breaks down more factors on that. So it's somewhat similar, um, but a lot of it has to be backed up with evidence. That's going to be the big change here. So that was a very brief overview of what it looks like. I'm going to also be giving you a video in the future on how to actually set up the outlines and going through the whole process like I did for the informative speech, but just so you know, it's really breaking down your propositions and your reasons to support your case. The next two organizational structures that we'll talk about are a bit more complicated. So problem, cause, solution. If you are doing question of policy passive agreement, you have to use problem, cause, solution. So how does that break down? Well, each of the steps listed up here becomes a point in your body. So you have a problem. This is where you need to prove that there's an issue. So what is the problem, right? Prove that there's actually something more changing. Cause, so of course, what's actually the catalyst for this. Now this is optional. You don't have to have cause. So you could have an outline that's just problem solution. That's fine as well. And then solution. Here you have to first tell us what you actually want to do to change things, right? And this is an entity is going to make that change as opposed to the audience and prove its effectiveness, that it's actually going to work. So let me give you an example. If you were doing the topic of healthcare, right, your problem, you would first start with saying, we have serious diseases that go undiagnosed and untreated. Well, why? 
Well, there's a lot of costs involved with medical insurance and medical care in general. It's extremely expensive. So what's the solution? Create a national health care system for all, and of course then they'd have to prove the effectiveness. Let's look at an example outline that actually does this so you can see what it would look like in that format. So like I mentioned before, the introduction's not going to change, same steps, ethos, thesis, relevancy, attention getter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of that is the same. Now, where it's going to change is in the body. So each of the points actually becomes your body point. So the first one, problem. So this, once again, this is the same topic I just showed you. This is talking about a national health care system. So first, she starts by saying most people can't afford health insurance, right? So then they're proving that, that people are either can't afford it or un uninsured. Um, people with insurance can't afford the cost. Once again, evidence proving that. So what you need to do in the problem is really just prove there's a problem, right? Why is there an issue? Why do we even need to change this? Well, before you can argue for a change, you first have to prove that there's some sort of need for a change. Then we move on to the second step, cause. Now remember, like I said earlier, this is optional. If it doesn't help your case, right, if there's no clear cause or the cause really doesn't help the argument, you can leave that off. However, this student does. So they're saying capitalism and healthcare don't mix, and then they prove that with a few different points that they bring in here. And then also talking about that they make things more expensive. Same thing prove that with evidence and then the solution so remember each of those is breaking down problem is one point cause is your second point and solution is your third point so here like I said you have to say what you're gonna do and prove that it works so first they start by saying it's worked um, so it's worked in other countries they give evidence they give another example of the fact that it's worked in Massachusetts and then sort of explain what the plan is Okay, so again, like I said, I just showed you an example of this in the outline. That was a very brief overview. You'll get an actual video that'll show how to do this. Okay, the last one is Monroe's motivated sequence. This one corresponds to question of policy, personal actions. Remember, if you're doing personal action, you have to do Monroe's. Monroe's is one of the more complicated ones because it breaks down into five steps. The first step is attention. The second one is need. The third one is satisfaction. The fourth one is visualization. And the last one is action. So let me explain what each of these steps is. Attention. What you're doing in this step is using some sort of narrative or scenario that shows there's a problem. So this is actually going to be in the attention getter step. So this does slightly change how the outline is going to function. The knee. This is establishing that there's a problem. So it's essentially the same thing as the, the problem step and problem cause solution. You have to prove that there is some sort of need for a change. There's an issue, a problem. Satisfaction. This is kind of similar to the solution step and problem cause solution. But instead here you're telling the audience what they have to do. And you also want to discuss the benefits, why they should do it. Visualization. So this step requires that you go back to the narrative that you had in the attention step and fix it. And then action gives specific information on how they can solve the problem. So let me give you an example to make it a little bit more clear. So I'm going to do a speech specifically on convincing people to get CPR certified. So my attention step, which remember is a narrative, I can use a scenario of a heart attack. So let's say you're at a friend's house, then all of a sudden the dad has a heart attack, no one knows what to do, they call 911, he's taken away in an ambulance and he is in um, critical care. Then we move on to the need step. So this is when we say, hey, there's a real big problem. People are dying from heart attacks and a lot of people don't really know what to do when someone's suffering from a heart attack. Then we move on to satisfaction. Remember, this step is actually saying what the audience should do and the benefits. So get CPR certified. Visualization. Go back to the narrative or scenario and fix it. So I would go back, right? You're trained. You have the same scenario. The father has a heart attack, but this time you know what to do. You jump in and you help the father. Action. So this is specifically what they can do. So 
tell them where classes are, where they can get signed up, all that sort of stuff. Typically, students will ask me, well, what's the difference between satisfaction and action? They seem very similar. Action is where you're giving them specific information, right? So where they can go for classes, a website they can visit, passing out pamphlets, really specific things so they can actually do the step you're asking of them. So here's what an outline would look like in Monroe's. Now, like I mentioned, the first step, the attention step, actually is going to be your attention getter. Remember, it has to be a narrative or scenario that showcases the problem. So here, this individual is doing a speech on learning self-defense. Her scenario is she works at Starbucks, she gets off late, and then someone attacks her. All the other steps of the um, introduction, they're still there. So those don't change. It's just the attention getter it has to be a narrative. Then we move on to the first body point, which is the need. Remember, this is similar to the problem step and problem cause solution. So why would we need to learn self-defense? Well, crime is a really huge issue. So they list a bunch of different factors sort of proving that. Then we move on to the second step, satisfaction. Remember, you tell the audience what they should do and then tell them the benefits of it. The third step is visualization. Remember what you want to do here is go back to the narrative but you're actually going to fix it. So remember the narrative she had was that she got attacked. Here now we have um, same thing sort of happens but she knows what to do and she's able to, to get away safely. So that's the point here. Action. So this is the last step and what you're going to be doing here is giving the audience information on how they can actually put into play basically what you want them to do, right? So in satisfaction you tell them what you want them to do, in action you give them the tools to do it. So this student um, was a student I had at FAU, so that's why she's mentioning FAU. So she says, you know, there's self-defense classes here, um, mentioning a few other things on rape aggression classes. And so she writes this on the board. She also talks about the YMCA. So all of these things are what you want to do in the action. Give them specific information. So that is it. So here's what you need to do for homework. There's a couple of questions I need you to answer. The first one is, come up with four example topics. So this is one for each. One for question of fact, question of value, and obviously two each for question of policy, personal, and passive. These don't have to be topics you're interested in doing. I just need you to choose something that shows me that you understand how it works. The other thing, I do actually want to hear topics that you're interested in. So these ones need to be three full sentence. So you have to give me specifics so I can actually have the topic. Controversial topics. A lot of times I have students that are still submitting things that are not controversial, like lowering tuition. No one's going to disagree with you on that, so there's no point in persuading. So really make sure it is controversial. And this one, so question two, are topics that you are interested in doing. Here's an example of how I want you to do it. So give me your actual topic. And then, of course, like I said in the second part of the question, tell me what question it actually is and what they correspond to for organizational format. You have to list both. Then if you were doing a passive agreement speech, which organizational format would you use? What's the difference between passive and personal? and what is question of value. So answer these, but I'm especially looking at these ones. If you also want to come up with topics that you're interested in question one, that's fine, because I will be approving topics based on this list. All right, that is it.